Hello, good evening. You're welcome again to Online Healing Crusade. We're so glad to have you at this time again. If you are joining us for the first time, this is Online Healing Crusade. Hmm, healing Crusade. Healing of the total man. These days, we need God to heal us. We need God to heal our land. And God wants to do so. That's why he's sending his servants all over the world. And he's sending He's sending his servant, one of his servants, here tonight to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's been doing it on ground in so many places. And the Lord told him to take it online because we have, we have need of healing in our land. All over the world, it's a worldwide thing. That's why this crusade is coming to your place right where you are, in your home, in your kitchen, in your dining, wherever you are eating, on the dining, you are with your family or you are there alone, yet you are not alone. The Holy Spirit is there with you because he orchestrated your coming online. And I believe as many people that God has brought online, God has something for them. Do you believe it? You only need to believe that God, ha God has you in mind. And he has something to do in your life. That's why he's bringing you online. Tonight, I believe you are going to allow the Lord to reach you because he's ready. And the Holy Ghost is there with you. The servant of the Lord is ready. And God is sending him with his word from heaven. Join me tonight to welcome the servant of the Lord. Join my heart. Evangelist, we will fail you. God bless you. Stay connected. And you see the glory of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will thank God for another opportunity to bring the word of life unto you. We ask that the spirit of the Lord, the power of the Lord, and his anointing will reach you wherever you are in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, today, <laughs> I want to minister from the book of Joel, chapter 2. Joel, chapter 2. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And I'm reading from Joel chapter 2 from verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire, and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call upon the name, call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered. And the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Praise the Lord. Um, I just know, you know, I'm an evangelist. And um, there are a number of things that um, God has been doing these days. And um, what is on my heart right now is uh, how to impact other people with what God has given to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And uh, so this is what is crossing my mind. That's why I'm coming with this scripture. So it's not just enough. You see, the ministry of an evangelist is not just enough to just get people saved, healed, and delivered, which is uh, the primary assignment. But there's another dimension of you ministering to people who are not sinners, who are believers. And now those believers can catch the fire of God so that something will begin to burn inside their spirit, man. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, when you have fire, you should, you know, kindle the fire of God in the life of other people also. You understand me? So I, I believe that um, the number of people that God will like us to minister to along that line. Now, I shared some things yesterday about the anointing of the Lord going out like river. In the desert and then moving and moving just like the bible says uh, 
in the book of Revelation and in the book of Ezekiel 47. How the Spirit of God is moving from one level to another, from one level to ankle deep, I mean from uh, uh, ankle deep to knee deep to loins deep, and then a river that you cannot just walk in it, you have to swim. And on that, but it's talking about levels, graduation levels, acceleration levels of the anointing. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, wherever the river of that life flows into, it will bring life unto the people, it will bring healing unto the people. And then there will be many fish that you will be able to catch many fish. And you know, as evangelists, we are fishers of men. So the fish we are catching is not just physical fish, it's the fish of men. You know, Jesus Christ told Peter, so leave this issue of fishing fishes. Come on, and I'll make you fishers of men. So every evangelist is a fisher of men. But then, as you are trying to do fishing of men, you must come with the healing anointing. So that the more people begin to see the healing power of God operating in your life, the more they come for your meetings. And the more the meetings become where you can harvest many souls for God. So you catch many souls. Where you have toiled all night and you've not been able to do much, but when God gets into your boat and the anointing of God begins to flow in your life, more people come to God through your ministry. And that is what I have experienced over the years. And uh, right now, uh, this aspect is very important. Now, I just read to you Joel chapter 2 uh, from verse 28 to 32, right? But let me take you to Acts chapter 2. All right, you see the similarity and then you know why I'm going that way as an evangelist. Okay. Now the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because they, that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians, Medians, Elamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia, and Judea, Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And uh, they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What men are these? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunk, they are not drunken as you suppose, saying it is but the third hour of the day. Okay? So they couldn't have been drunk that early. That's what he's trying to say. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, because it is the third hour of the day. It's early. So people are not drunk at that time. But he now said that, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. That's the one I just read to you. He said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God. I pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servant and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved shall be delivered, was what um, uh, Joel chapter 2 said in the language of the Old Testament, okay? And it shall come to pass, that's verse 32 of Joel 2, shall come to pass, that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. So to be saved also is to be delivered. In, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. 
as the Lord has said, and the remnant whom the Lord has called. Okay, but when he was referring to that, he said here in verse 21 of Acts chapter 2, and it shall come to pass, that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourself also know. Okay, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. When God had raised up, having loosed the pain of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I shall not be moved. Okay? And on and on and on and on. But the important thing is that what Joel said in the book of Joel as a prophecy for the future, in those days will I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That is what happened or what began to happen in Acts chapter 2. I just now saying that the Holy Spirit fell on all them that dwell in Jerusalem. I mean, that uh, were in the upper room waiting for the Lord and praying and waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost power came upon them. You understand what I'm saying? So Peter referred, connected it. What happened prophetically in the Old Testament? What is happening presently in the New Testament? What happened prophetically in the Old Testament? What has happened practically in the New Testament? Okay? The prophecy of it and then the performance of it in the New Testament. So you need a person that can understand the things of God very well to be able to understand that kind of flow. Are you getting what I'm saying? To be able to connect the present with what is already written. You need a man who we call in the Bible interpreters. Those who are the people that interpret the move of God, interpret the plan of God, interpret the purpose of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So in this case, uh, Peter, an evangelist and also an apostle, he came up with that linkage that what you see happening here is not ordinary and it is actually a fulfillment of prophecy. The prophecy that the Lord has given unto us from the mouth of his prophet Joel in the Old Testament. That is what is happening today. Today is the beginning of that outpouring of his spirit. You get me? Now, when we have we had a crusade uh, just one more one week plus now ago, uh, just about eight days or seven days or nine days. I think about nine days now because we finish on seventh. And today is uh, the fourteenth or something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So uh, the Spirit of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord is doing something great in our generation. People got saved, people got healed, people got delivered from demons, and people got liberated from strongholds of the enemy uh, five years uh, deafness. He said the ear pop upon and they started hearing after the minister to the meeting. But not only that, the last day, we had over 500 people come out that they need Holy Ghost baptism. Oh my God. Because during the crusade, they have been saved. They now need Holy Ghost baptism. I you getting know, Maybe they have been saved before they didn't have Holy Ghost baptism. But the final day, that's one of the things God told me to do. That if you call everybody that has been saved throughout this program, day one, two, three, four, five, six, this is the seven that they should come out for Holy Spirit baptism. Because that's part of what God has given me. I minister to people that receive Holy Ghost baptism. When I, uh, I do on ground healing, run uh, about high institutions in Nigeria, going to universities, college of education, and uh, polytechnic and all that, or monotechnic, whichever one. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And God has been so faithful. So now that uh, it's open air crusade, it's not just campus crusade. It's everybody, youth, adult, you know, elderly, whatever, kings, chief, whoever <laughs> shows up. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now God still wants to do the same. So you see that kind of number, 500 plus. So we have to minister and minister. We minister generally. Then we started ministering personally, laying hand on them. I, most of my... Uh, 
people that work with me as a team, all right? So join hands together. I will send them forth and say, now begin to lay hand on them because we need to get as many as possible among them to be filled with the Holy Spirit now. And then we did that. And by the time we finished, I just waited a little to take one or two testimonies. And a number of them came out. And we could only take some. We couldn't take all. But the important thing is that that is part of what God had said. That he will be pouring out his spirit on all flesh. And he mentioned that on handmaidens, on servants. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's where he will be pouring. He said in verse 18 of Acts chapter 2. Say, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I'll pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. You see, so by the time we minister to people, one of the things that surprised people there, I think, was the fact that uh, the kind of people that came out to give testimony, some of them were some young guys that you don't, who is going to give this one Holy Ghost the way they look. But since he had just accepted Jesus and you are offering him Holy Ghost baptism again, he takes it with the same faith he has taken salvation. So easily they receive. Far, far faster than those old people who have uh, uh, been waiting for, for a long time. And part of them said, look, I have been hearing people pray this way. I don't know how I'm going to get. But today, I have never spoken like this before. God has just baptized me too. I'm speaking and all that. It was, they were happy because the evidence is the speaking in tongues. It will give you an evidence that you have truly received something. You may now receive later, but for those who are there, for them to be able to know that something really happened today, they need that evidence. And so that is part of the assignment. But much more, I believe that um, the Spirit of God is out to lay hold on many people these days. You understand what I'm saying? The Spirit of God is out to lay hold on many people so that the work of God will be done by a greater number of people, not few. Many are called, few are chosen, but many are going to respond this same time. And one of the things that is holding my heart seriously is how to multiply the laborers on the field. The laborers on the field. There is more places to go. There is many crusades to be done. You know, thank God for us in Nigeria that we are able to uh, still have open air crusade. There are some places you can't have open air crusade right now. But we need to carry fire. So that whether it is open air crusade or indoor, whether it is outreach or in reach, the fire of God must keep on spreading. And the power of God must keep on reaching out to the people. So one of the things I believe God wants us to do is to share with you. Because you might have been hearing me for a long time now and you are not sick. But you are not tired of hearing. You understand what I'm saying? So you keep coming to hear. But there should be something more you are hearing that is not just healing you. Or preparing you not to be sick or preparing you to know what to do whenever sickness comes. But much more than that is you can be anointed. You can be equally anointed with the fire of God, with the power of God, with the Holy Ghost bubbling inside of you. And God is ready to give anybody. You don't have to be an archbishop to have anointed. You don't have to be a bishop to have anointed. You don't have to be a pastor, evangelist, pastor, teacher to have anointed. You just have to be born again. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? You just have to be born again. That's all. Let me give you Acts chapter 2 from verse um, from verse let me start from verse 30. Therefore being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He is saying this before, speak of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Verse 32. This Jesus had God raised up, whereof we are all we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear for david is not ascended unto heaven but he said himself the lord sit on my right hand sit down the lord said unto my lord 
sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies or your foes your foes too. So this Jesus, I'm going somewhere. Let me continue till I get there. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom you have crucified to be both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? That's the anointing. And the anointing began to speak. People are convicted. They are ready to change. Then, verse 38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. That's one kind of baptism. So baptizing water for the remission of your sin is one kind of baptism. And they now said, And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That includes us. He's not talking to the Jews alone. I said to people that are far off, who will still believe when we keep preaching this gospel across the nations of the world. They too have an inheritance here. They too can be saved. They too can be filled with the Holy Ghost. They too can receive the power of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, look at the condition. It didn't say only apostles will have Holy Ghost power. It didn't say only evangelist or teacher, pastor will have Holy Ghost power or prophet. It said, anyone that believes, that have repented and believed, then is qualified for water baptism. It's also qualified for Holy Ghost baptism. I'll take that verse at it again. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, that means to be born again. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. Baptism for remission of sin is you are baptized into Christ. Not that you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. No. But after that, move forward and say, You shall now receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, Holy Spirit will now be given to you as a gift. After repentance. You understand what I'm saying? For the promise is unto you. What is the promise? The way he has promised the people in the before he left. You know, he said that uh, it is expedient that I go. That if I do not go, there's no way you can receive the Holy Ghost. But when I go and I get to the Father, I will tell the Father, I will ask of the Father that he should give you the Holy Ghost and he will send it to you. Whom you have to receive. You understand me? So that's what he's referring to there, the promise of the Father. It is a promise, and God is going to fulfill his promise. And when Jesus Christ got to heaven, when we saw the Holy Ghost come down, maybe like seven days after his ascension, then we knew that he has delivered the message, he has asked the Father, and the Father has taught it wise, which day he's going to release it, and in about seven days' time we had the Holy Ghost come for the first time upon people like fire. I you what I'm saying? John chapter 16 verse 7 he said nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter that's the holy ghost will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment okay so that's he he, he told us the promise he gave up this promise that he will ask the father and the father will send us the holy spirit are you getting what I'm saying? So the promise of God includes uh, the Holy Spirit being sent unto us. So when the Holy Spirit came, it is in answer to the prayer that God has prayed that I will be sending that to you. Are you getting it? Now, it is for us to be able to do the work of God. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it said, The Spirit will come upon us. Uh, it said, But you shall receive the power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea, in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So, you see again, the promise that what we need to be able to become witnesses for him is the power of God. And that power will not come until we are baptized in the Holy Ghost. After baptism of the Holy Spirit, then there can be baptism of fire. That's the power aspect. So some have speaking in tongues, but they don't have the real power. But that's introduction to it. You have to have Holy Spirit baptism with the speaking in tongues. And then you can move into the power aspect. Jesus was baptized with water and then baptized with the Holy Ghost. And then he moved into the wilderness and prayed and fasted for 40 days. He came back with power. So it means when he had the Holy Ghost, he has already gotten what we lead to get in the power. But then did something. That's the aspect that most people don't want to do. They don't want to do prayer and fasting. But there was a time that people 
uh, his own disciples wanted to get people healed of some sort of sicknesses and they couldn't and then when he came back one of the things he told them said this kind uh, yeah yeah this kind that you are trying to do you cannot get it done except you include prayer and fasting in your consecration are you getting what i'm saying so we must know that something needs to be added all right now look at the uh, act of the apostles chapter one again let me read now from verse four and five and being assembled together with them he commanded them that they should not depart from jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father you see again it is the promise of the father you see but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Okay? Praise God. So the promise of the Father to everybody that is a son in the kingdom is Holy Spirit baptism. And you can have that even today. I want to pray with you. I don't know whether what I'm saying today is making some sense to you, but I know it does. If you are there, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And you are born again. You are qualified to receive right now. And I want to minister to you in that line. And then also, if you have been born again and then you have Holy Ghost baptism, you may need power. Now to pray for you also. Because these are things that God has given unto us. And we have the assignment and the responsibility to make sure that we minister to others also so they can receive the same. Are you getting me? So, shall we pray now? If you are born again, whatever it is, just follow me in this because if you are not born again, I want to be sure of that before I minister. So just say the following words after me. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I know you died on the cross for my sins. For the remission of my sins. Today, I ask that you cleanse me of all sinful nature. I turn away from my sin. I repent and turn unto you. I ask that you write my name in the book of life. Erase my name from the book of sinners. Give me a new beginning. Give me a new heart. Let me be able to follow you all the days of my life. And grant me the grace to live above sin. And to live my life for you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. If you pray that prayer, I'm sure something happened in your heart. Not only that, I'm sure you ask, make a request. We have a book that I have published that is for new believers. Anybody that just got born again. I have books that I can send to you. But you have to request for it and give us your address. We we'll send it to you free. Okay? Yes, power to maintain your salvation. After you are saved, you need power to maintain it. All right, let's move to the next level. Now, if you want Holy Spirit baptism after salvation, you are free to receive Holy Spirit baptism. Now, I want to minister to you. You just raise your hand up unto God in surrender. And then you say the following words before you begin to pray. Lord Jesus, I know that you have sent for the Holy Spirit as promised since the day of pentecost today i heard your word about it pouring out your spirit upon our flesh and i want and i desire to have the holy spirit in my life with the evidence of speaking in tongues and not only that manifesting the power of god in my life so i can be useful as a witness to you and uh, a witness for you and a witness to the world by the power of god he said, it is after we receive power that we can be witnesses for you in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the rest of the world. I want to be part of that. And I need your power to be able to do that. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit from today. And give me that power to be able to pray in tongues, to worship you, to celebrate, and to intercede, and to be part of your army on earth in the name of Jesus. Now, after you have said that, just breathe in and breathe out. Why am I saying that? Just to stop the flow of English language and then or whatever language is your mother tongue that you are used to or the one you used for prayer before. You need to stop that and then start. This one you want to start. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So 
that is going to be a bubble up of a new expression. You want to express yourself to God because you believe you have received. You are not going to receive later. Since you pray and you ask for, the Bible says you can't ask God for bread and he'll give you stone. You can't ask him for fish and he'll give you scorpion. Are you mm -hmm. just saying? So if you ask and uh, you, you, you know that if we natural people, when our children ask us for good things, we don't give them bad things. You're asking for a good thing when you ask for the Holy Spirit. So God is surely going to give you. And then he has promised he will do that. And when you now ask for it, oh, that's true. It's going to be there. So what you have to act by faith and say, Lord, I believe I receive your spirit. Now I want to pray in tongues. Are you getting what I'm saying? I want to pray in another language as my prayer, just to offer thanksgiving to you. So after you have said that, now you release yourself and begin to pray in the spirit. As the spirit gives you utterance, what the Spirit puts on your heart or your mind, you say them out in thanksgiving and appreciation to God. That's how it flows. And then you just see that's the beginning. Like you open a tap and then water begins to rush out. So you open your spirit man and out of your belly will now flow out rivers of living water. So the way you speak may be different from the way I speak, but you are going to receive a flow from God. Shall we pray now? So you begin to pray no more in your English or your normal language, but in the Holy Ghost as the Spirit gives you utterance. All right? Rosha de Kelum Randos Keliandra Gadas to Telibro do Boshila Daya Ketola Pronomosida Yada Yandos to Bledico Dobra Adosta Licarianda Coteliprod Cotosile Dietos Yedosta Barada Adelianda Catua La Purina Moson Tevian Brocotoside Yedo de Yada Labacas La Corina Sianda Rocashila Masse de le koti, le pori nana masuda yede. E lo sitao, barade, chele kona, atofiana sidi. Brusha de riko tolos, e le brandosta, ala dori keteru abrukoto sopra de ketori ba yede. Yade de yadula bakatori abrudeka da seta libro de koto sima sede yedu godobaya. Baratu ala borena moson de riandra kadosti, le kori bishi le keru kata rokoto sopra de gade. Yede de yadala basati aradosha, le kori moson tariandro kotoske. Ya bari kadosa li pereke dosto morokoto siya de yede. Oria bala katusa le porina na masse de yedo. Ya do satoga, bakatu ala kiga. Ya do de le bekora, alu pariana na maside. Ya do koto sobre de ketori morokoto sobre de kete prorokoto siya de ya. Da go da go da ge da go dobre de gede. Ya do sto masenderian tolikadora. Rusha ili kurate masida yete. Mora baratea ando koto siya de rikadoa. Rusha li kederi mosotori mbrukada diya de la babarakata sabre lo koto sobre de gede. Ya do ste masenderian na rukata siya da. Maro sali kederi bo shila kora basare. In Jesus' name we pray. Once you start the flow like that, there's no limit again. Anytime you want to pray, when you finish praying your normal language, switch over. The Bible says, I can pray in the spirit. I can pray with understanding. I can sing in the spirit. I can sing with understanding. So you can switch between one and the other. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then when you release yourself to pray in the spirit, you find out that you'll be able to do more than your normal praying you understand because the spirit of god knows better than whatever you can pray when your prayer point is exhausted the holy ghost has just started i get what i'm saying so that's a new beginning for you when i pray it will stay with you and then you keep on the flow the longer you pray the more you get stronger in the holy spirit god bless you until tomorrow be healthy wealthy and strong god bless you